Hello everyone, my name is Giancarlo De Chirico. I am the RF Market Segment Director for the Probe Systems Business Unit at Form Factor. And today here at European Micro Week, I'm going to show you uh, a dual band, single suite, broadband solution up to 220 gigahertz. So for uh, semiconductor device modeling engineers and integrated circuit designers, it's really important to have an accurate uh, millimeter wave uh, device characterization. And for this, in order for them to, uh, for the device modeling engineers to build up a very accurate and fast um, uh, a process design kit, they need to have like broadband test equipment. And here today, we're gonna show you uh, a system that goes from 10 megahertz up to 220 gigahertz. This is a collaboration among uh, different companies, leaders in the industry. This is Keysight Technologies, Form Factor, Dominion Microprobe, and BDI. They came all together to demonstrate a system like this. I'm gonna show you the different system level components. So right here we got a Summit 200 uh, millimeter probe station from Form Factor. It's a fully automated system. And it's running, uh, it's controlled by the, the VNA. It's a Keysight PNAX and uh, uh, that goes up to 67 gigahertz. There's a millimeter wave controller, uh, four port that drives actually all the, uh, the two extenders, the one from Keysight, the M5291A system, and the VDI uh, frequency extenders as well. So the frequency extenders from Keysight go all the way up to 130 gigahertz, while the VDI frequency extender cover uh, the frequency range from 130 all the way up to 220 gigahertz. And the unique uh, solution that we have developed uh, together with the Minion Microprobe is a new probe that combines the two signals, the waveguide signal from the VDI extender and the coax signals that are coming out of the uh, M5291A from Keysight onto a single probe that then lands onto uh, the device under test or actually lands onto the wafer on the probe station. This is a fully automated station, so it has capability to do automated RF measurements with this programmable RPP 504 positioners. And so our customers can really do uh, monitor the calibration and recalibrate without the operator, in, operator intervention. So now our expert, Gavin Fisher, application engineer at Form Factor, will give you an overview of how we can perform a calibration with a single suite broadband from 10 megahertz all the way up to 220 gigahertz. And then we're gonna show you also how we can, uh, how we can do an active measurement and a live measurement here at European Micro Week. Hello, my name is Gavin Fisher and I'm an applications engineer from the Systems Business Unit of Form Factor. I'm just going to give you a quick overview of calibration and some device measurements using our new 220 gigahertz single sweep solution. The system is also equipped with our motorized positioners for autonomous RF, uh, so I'm going to make use of those uh, rather than using the uh, manual controls of the machine. I'm going to align my right hand probe here um, with the standards ready for calibration. You can see that we can move this in very small increments. If I move the controls like this, you can see really nice micro control, and I'll bring it down nice and slowly to contact. Very good, so now we've made contact. I'll just set that position in here, set that to home. The system is already referenced to home, so I'm going to uh, just use that now to uh, make an auto calibration. It's gonna be uh, measuring all the standards in raw, doing computation and sending the error terms back to the vector network analyzer in order to make corrected measurements. So I'll start the auto cal off now. System moves to the through standard and you can see the alignment of the probes with respect to these lines. These are useful for us to do initial alignment uh, and they also give us a feedback of how well we're doing. This is the last measurement in the sequence and we're using the LRRM calibration algorithm for this. One thing to say is we haven't actually tweaked at the moment the open uh, capacitance, which is the validation mechanism. So we might see a little bit of a slope on it. Um, we'll be correcting that uh, as time goes on. So we've got our error terms, and we're going to, we're going to um, send those to the VNA, and we've got a calibration which is acceptable, so that's excellent. And the, and the error terms are now in the vector and analyzer, ready to make our measurements of the device under test. 
So now that we've got a calibrated VNA, uh, we got uh, a real life active device out to 220 gigahertz we want to measure. Uh, we're going to be using uh, Python uh, to talk to WinCal. WinCal is both a calibration software, but we can also use it to take measurements uh, with our report viewer, so we can use that for analysis purposes, uh, as well as doing the measurements. Uh, we've got uh, a GPIB controlled power supply on the machine, and we're going to be uh, basically applying a, a range of biases between minus 0.4 and 0 volts on the uh, gate, and I believe it's uh, 3.6 volts on the drain. Uh, so we're going to get some uh, measurements of this active device. Let's uh, fire it up and hopefully we'll see some nice, uh, nice active uh, measurements from the device. And we do, we've got some nice gain. And all the way out to 220 gigahertz. So now we've got a, a calibrated vector network analyzer, we're going to uh, take some real life measurements of an active device. Uh, we're going to do that uh, using uh, Python, so you can see we have the scripting console uh, native to uh, Velux, our program control software, by which we can you know, run Python script or simple script. But using the Python script, we can do some pretty powerful things. One of those things is we can, uh, can connect to WinCal using uh, an interface called uh, WinCal Remoting, which has a pretty big library of functions. And the thing to remember is WinCal is not just a calibration tool. It's also a tool by which we can do to take you know, real life measurements. In this case, what we're going to be doing is uh, basically applying a bias using a GP GPIB control power supply, and at the same time taking those active measurements. So uh, let's uh, fire that off. Our probes are uh, already in place uh, on the device of the test. And let's fire it off. Uh, I'll clear that so we can see what the individual thing's coming in. And it will basically provide a series of biased measurements. And hopefully we'll see we've got some uh, gain on our device. have up here I can put my marker over here and you can see the the value or you could put this on there it's a little bit off the screen and it all makes life pretty simple